Hi, my name is Margaret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to algorithms. Before writing a computer program that solves a problem, you need two things. A good understanding of the problem and a plan how to solve it. For the rest of the video, we're going to focus on the plan because an algorithm is such a plan. Any computing program can be solved by executing a sequence of instructions in a specific order and an algorithm is such a sequence of instructions that leads to a predictable result. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have an everyday algorithm called get ready for work. First we get up, take a shower, get dressed, eat breakfast, go to work. Let's look what happens if we change the order of number two and number three. Let's say you get up, get dressed, take a shower, eat breakfast, go to work. If you ever tried this, you would see immediately how important it is to execute the instructions in the right order. Now it is your turn. Come up with an everyday algorithm and write down the instructions in the right order. Pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. Here is an example I came up with. Let's say we have an everyday algorithm called fill up the gas tank. We pay with a credit card, choose the grade, take off the gas cap, insert the nozzle, wait until the tank is full, return the nozzle and put the gas cap back on. Or here's another example how to make hot chocolate. Pour one cup of milk into a glass, mix in two tablespoons of chocolate powder, heat in the microwave for 90 seconds. You can see that of course is a recipe. Recipes are special kinds of everyday algorithms. When we write algorithms for computer programs, the question comes up, how can we best represent this algorithm? There are two commonly used ways I want to introduce here. One of them is pseudocode. Pseudocode is an informal language to develop algorithms. It is not an actual programming language. Pseudocode allows you to create an outline of a program without being concerned about syntactic details it can be easily converted into programming statements. Typically, pseudocode describes statements representing actions, for example, input, output, calculations, etc., and not variable declarations. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a class called rectangle. We want the user to choose a length and a width, and then display length, width, area. And after that, we want to double the length and see how that affects the area. So this is how that would look in pseudocode. Create a new rectangle from data provided by the user. Display length, width, and area of the rectangle. Double the size of the rectangle length display the area of the modified rectangle. Very sequential in this particular example. Let's look how this translates to Java. So now I'm going to show you how I can translate the pseudocode I just discussed into Java. So here is my pseudocode. The first statement is create new rectangle from data provided by the user. And I'm going to translate that to Java right here. I already added an import statement for my scanner. 
Now I create my instance of a scanner. I call it input. I initialize it with a new scanner system in. This is going to read from the keyboard. I'm going to prompt the user system out print length so the user knows what I'm expecting here. And now I'm going to create a variable and I'm assigning it the value provided by the user. And I'm going to repeat the same thing for the width. So here I say system out print width int width is input oops, next int. So at this point the user provided me with a length and a width and now I'm going to use the data from the user to create a new rectangle. I say rectangle my rectangle has a new rectangle based on the values from the user which is length and width. So that's what we did. Create a new rectangle from data provided by the user. Notice how one statement in my pseudocode can correspond to, to a whole number of statements in my Java code. So there's no one-on-one -on -one correlation here. Next thing I have to do is display length, width and area of the rectangle. So I can do this. I'm going to use a print statement for that. System out printf length percent d width percent d area percent d and I'll make a percent n for new line and I'm going to pass my different values my rectangle get length my rectangle get width and my rectangle area My next instruction is double the size of the rectangle length. So I'm going to do that. I create a new variable. I call it double length. And it is the original length doubled. So here is my rectangle get length times two. And now I'm going to use this double length to set a new value for my rectangle length. So I say my rectangle set length with my double length. I could have done this in a single statement as well, but in this case I chose to have two statements just for clarity. My last direction here is to display the area of the modified rectangle. I'm going to do this with a print statement. I say system out printf area after length was doubled and now this is a integer value again percent d and once again a percent n for a new line and i get my new value from my rectangle area so at this point i'm going to compile i'm going to make this window a little bit bigger we don't need the pseudocode anymore I can see that there's a compile error. Notice the pointer pointing to rectangle and it tells me it cannot find a symbol and when I double check and notice I have a typo, the N is missing. So I'm going to fill this in, compile again and run. And now I'm asked for length. Let's say my length is four, my width is two. Now length four, width two makes an area of eight. And after doubling my length, my new area would be 16. At this point, I showed you how to write an algorithm in pseudocode and how to translate that to Java. Now I want to show you another way how you can write down an algorithm, and that is with an activity diagram. UML activity diagrams are graphical representations of workflows. They represent the flow from one action to another. Activity diagrams can be used to represent an algorithm. So here is an example of the very algorithm that we just programmed in Java. 
Activity diagrams always start with a black disk and they end in a symbol that looks similar to the starting point but with a hollow ring around it. Here I have actions. They have those rounded corners and they are connected by arrows. And we just follow along those arrows from the start until we reach the end. So here I'm starting, it says create a new rectangle from user provided data, next one. Display length, width and area of the rectangle. Keep moving along the arrow. Double the size of the length of the rectangle and we keep going. Display the area of the modified rectangle until we hit the end. So this is a different way to represent an algorithm. Let's look at a second example. This is a pseudocode that helps us decide whether someone is ready to ride a roller coaster. So first we read in the height from the user and then we check. If the height is greater or equal to 50, then we print a welcome message. Now here you can see the equivalent algorithm displayed as an activity diagram. Here is the starting point. We read in the height. We reach a decision. Depending on the guard, we go one way or the other. So if my height is greater or equal 50, I reach this action which prints a welcome message and I continue to merge a symbol and reach the end. If the height was less than 50, I would have gone straight down and to the end, no welcome message would have been printed. This time I'm going to demonstrate how you can translate a algorithm presented as an activity diagram into Java code. So here is my activity diagram. I'm going to start right here the start symbol and I reach my first action which says read in height. Here I prepared already my scanner and now I'm ready to create a scanner instance. Scanner input is no scanner system in. This allows me to read in input from the keyboard. I'm going to prompt the user system out print height and now I'm going to declare an integer variable called height and I'm going to assign it the value entered by the user. So at this point I completed my first action I read in the height from the user and I reach a decision symbol. This indicates that I need to check whether my height is greater or equal 50. You can notice the guard here that tells me what to check for. And uh, if that is the case, a message should be printed. I'm going to translate that into an if statement. If height is greater or equal 50, then I'm going to print system out print line welcome to the roller coaster. Now my action has been completed. I continue. Here is a merge symbol which takes me to the finish. And now I can check my alternative path. Here was my decision. Let's say the height was not greater or equal 50. So here I have the second guard that makes me continue to merge symbol and continue to the end. So at this point the algorithm for my activity diagram has been implemented and I'm going to compile and run. And when I'm asked for my height I might say something like 35. You can see nothing happens because 35 is less than 50. If I would run again, and I'm going to check what happens when I enter 50, I will get a welcome message welcoming me to the roller coaster.